Hey guys, what is up? Swim here, and this is a project that I've been working on for over two weeks now with my boy Yusu. Uh, and if you watch my stream, you're going to be intimately familiar with what you're looking at already. Um, but it's kind of easier to show you uh, than explain, so I'm just going to do that. Uh, but real quick, the reason I'm posting this now, even though it's not quite done yet, you might notice there's a few unfinished things here. The reason I'm posting it now is because I figure it'll be good to kind of like spur on discussion in the communities, like on the Discord and on the Reddit, basically. Uh, I'm very curious to know what a lot of people, uh, especially you guys in the comments, think about some of like how I've like listed and tiered things here. And if you have any suggestions, like genuinely, I, I would actually be interested because this is something I've been working on for a while. Um, and it's definitely like changed the way I think about a lot of the cards, etc. And that's most of the reason I'm doing it. All right, so let's go ahead and take you guys through this project. And also, if you want to kind of pull it up and follow along in this video, there's a link in the description. You guys, you guys know this. YouTube, this is just, yeah, there's links in descriptions. Just click on the link and you can pull this up yourself. This is a fully public resource. Okay, so to show you guys what this is all about, we're going to do a little bit of a uh, tour here, basically. So, uh, in order of tabs, no particular order, this is uh, the Playarounds Helper, basically. The idea behind this is pretty straightforward. Uh, when you start a game, you see your opponent's regions, you're like, okay, my opponent is an Ionia P and Z deck, okay? Uh, these are the kinds of things you're going to want to just keep in mind uh, they might have in their hand at any time. Basically, it's just a list that I've personally chosen to be, you know, the highest impact cards that you should be aware that your opponent might have. You know, Static Shock might come out at the 4 mana turn. True Shot Barrage is, you know, avoid aligning uh, units at these HP levels in game. It's just kind of like a reminder tool while you're playing. Uh, even if you're not a totally new player, which of course this is going to be really useful for totally new players. But even if you're not one, it's still hard to remember literally every single card to always play around. So having a visual indicator is nice. And hopefully I can, you know, kind of go through and polish this and make the visuals look better. Maybe I actually like pull up the card art or something like that. Who knows? Um, deck tier list. The idea behind this is, you might notice the tiers are blank right now, but at a later point we will basically be putting in tiers. I want to do that when uh, we actually have a meta to talk about, right? Because without actually being able to play games uh, and without seeing an actual meta, it's just too hard to like actually tier decks. So I comment like some of them are stronger, some of them are like kind of weaker depending on you know my comments, but um, we're not going to tier them quite yet. Um, and as you might expect you can go through these and look at their uh, links if you just click on the link there. So you can see the actual list card for card, a couple of notes here sometimes, um, and it's pretty simple uh, based on that. Some of them even have some like uh, gameplay videos I guess you can check out. Um, and as you might notice, some of them don't have lists yet. That's uh, WIP is work in progress. Some of them I'm still, you're going to see these kind of like lists are going to be added to these probably in the next uh days you know we'll see card rating so this one took me a very long time um and basically the idea behind this is we've gone through and rated uh, every single card in the entire game uh adding you know a lot of notes about like how to play the card and why i think the card is good or bad uh basically the idea behind it is uh it's kind of a five to ten scale which sounds a little weird i know i know um it's kind of a weird system, but effectively, it's like it's kind of using a one to ten scale, and then anything below a five is just kind of all given an F. It's just kind of lumped together, um, because of course there's kind of no point. So uh, five is you know constructed viable card, like a really rare consideration, but just kind of makes it a cutoff point for constructed. Ten are like the best constructed cards. E is like below constructed level, but can work in expedition, and P is like. It doesn't work in either Constructed or Expedition for now, but, you know, it's a high potential card with future expansions, and F is just kind of a bad card, right? So, uh, obviously, archetypes are a little tricky. Low rating isn't necessarily that you're saying an archetype is bad, but um, it's just like if the card only fits into one archetype and that archetype is kind of mediocre, it might get like a 5 or a 6 from me. So you can see here, uh, I mean, you should definitely check this one out yourself. If you're interested in this game, it would be a good thing to kind of like scroll through and like look at all the ratings. Uh, and definitely a couple of these you will probably disagree with. And that's a large part of why I'm posting this, right? This is this is the kind of discussion I want to get going, right? I want you guys to be like, well, Swim, you're really overrating this. And here are a lot of reasons why. And just come come with actual arguments. And, you know, if they're good, I'll be like, well, yeah, no, I, I really was overrating that a little bit. You know, um, let me bump that down a bit. So these, these are always a work in progress. 
I will be like tweaking things out, you know, maybe maybe I'll be I'll be thinking about a card like tomorrow and I'll be like, you know, judgment is more of an eight than a nine or something like that, right? So uh, everything is gonna be bumped up like one or two, you know, what one point up here, one point down here. Um, but for the most part, I would say it's all like fairly accurate to where I currently think like the game is at, right? So a pretty useful tool, especially like I look at this when I first start deck building, basically, and I'm like, okay, let's start with, like, you know, the 10s and the 9s of the regions I'm in, and kind of go from there, right? Okay. Oh, and you can also sort by different metrics, but, you know, you can see that. This is a chart that YouTube put up. It's basically just, you know, showing your draw rate for each copy in deck. Um, pretty straightforward, so if you have, you know three copies of the cards in your deck, it's, you know, how, what, what are your odds of getting one by how many times you've drawn uh, from your deck, right? Draw Chance Calculator, a similar thing, another UC project, and basically the idea behind this, uh, it's a little incomplete right now, but the idea behind it is you will be able to uh, effectively uh, calculate what the odds of finding something uh, given a certain amount of draws for. So, It'll effectively be a hypergeometric calculator, except actually a little more accurate, because hypergeometric calculators don't account for the uh, mulligan redraw. Okay, <clears throat> and lastly, we have probably my favorite page of them all, actually. This is really, really, really cool, and I think uh, has you know, a good opportunity to lead some, to some pretty interesting discussion. Um, I'm actually going to spend a minute talking about this one. This is the statistics pulled from my own card rating sheet. So all of these, this isn't like hard statistics because these are based on the ratings, which is based on my opinion. But I've pulled a lot of people when I was like rating the cards and whether you disagree about my ratings, like, you know, everyone looking through the ratings will be like, well, yeah, I agree with a lot of it, but this card here should be a little higher. This card here should be a little lower. And, you know, at the end of the day, with a 318 card pool, even if there's minor disagreements, these statistics and these results will still likely stand, right? So, like, for example, I think this uh, this is a good visual indicator. Here's uh, card ratings by region. Check this out. So we can see Shadow Isles here has an immense concentration of 10s, you know, pretty good 9s, and very few, like, Fs, right? Like, and this is just, like, the power, super high power of Shadow Isles. We can see, like, PNZ, no surprise, has kind of the most Fs and no 10s, at least by my system, right? Like, PNZ is... Definitely in need of a lot of help, as is Noxus, you can see as well. Ionia is kind of weird where it's got a lot of Fs, but it's got a lot of, like, 10s as well. Um, which, you know, makes a lot of sense, because part of Ionia is very clunky, but it at least has... It's got more of its act together than, like, PNZ and Nox, right? Uh, effectively. Whereas Noxus's biggest problem is, like, it doesn't have a lot of, like, straight Fs, but it has just way too many, just, like, low potential cards, right? Whereas Ionia is kind of stronger, because it, it at least is kind of good with what it's doing, right? You can see an interesting chart like card ratings by mana cost. There's just so much to talk about, like how how these distributions work, right? Um, here's the here's twelve. This is War Mother's Call, uh, obviously. Um, histogram of card ratings, just showing like the distribution of these card ratings by rarity. You know, you can see here champions have a lot of tens. Um, and you'll also you, you'll you'll note that like there's first of all the game has a ton of commons in it uh, compared to like rares and epics, but also epics aren't really that powerful. Uh, epics have you know. A couple of decent cards, but most of the good cards are actually in common and rare, so, you know. Champions, obviously, are going to be the biggest throttle to deck building, probably, in terms of, like, what deck you want to be able to play. Because there's a lot of, like, pretty good champions, and they're pretty pricey. Um, but for the most part, epics won't really hold you back at all, which is good. Uh, card ratings by keyword. Uh, you will have to move my fat head if you want to be able to see this. Uh, so I'll just... Show you guys there, um, this is actually, this is a work in progress, I want to finish doing uh, this card ratings by keyword thing, it's not actually done yet, um, but a pretty cool thing about this is you can just kind of see, you know, uh, these are the spell distributions, like by all the cards tagged with spells, these are slow spells, which you, you might be able to notice have more Fs, more E's, a lot of E's. Like, check out all these E's. A lot of, like, slow spells are basically like, yeah, it's really hard to run them at a constructed level. Um, and yeah, I mean, if we want to talk about why slow spells are bad, I know that's been a discussion point, um, basically for a lot of my channel. I've, I've actually had this conversation many times about slow spells just being really bad with how the combat system works, like with how open attacking is very prevalent. It's really hard to get slow spells off for value. You'll, you'll look at this graph and you'll be like, wow, this is, you know, this is definitely showing slow spells are not great. Um, and we see fast and burst speed spells are doing fine. You might actually notice interesting lit up fast actually happens to have like higher um 
distributions than burst, whatever the hell that means. Obviously, burst is a more powerful keyword in most circumstances. Um, but yeah, that's it, basically. That is the uh, end results of this project that we've been working on for a while. It's a work in progress, so expect a lot more things to be kind of added to this as time goes on. Um, here, let me pop myself back into... Ooh, there I go. Um, so, it's a work in progress. It uh, hopefully will be a pretty helpful tool uh, to a lot of new players. But honestly, right now, I'm just interested in the discussion. Because there's not a lot of people actually like discussing this game. Because I'm on... You know, all the stuff every single day, and I definitely would like to see more interesting discussion there. So let me know what, you know, you guys happen to be thinking about this. I know that's like a, <laughs> it's like a YouTuber thing. Um, but honestly, I'm, I'm very interested in seeing what you guys think. Like, am I dead wrong about certain things? You know, certain things need to be bumped down or up a little bit. I'm very curious. I tend to explain a lot of, like, you know, why I write uh, cards or why I like certain decks built in a certain way in the comments of, you know, you know, where, where I list those, right? Like card ratings, like for example, a lot of people will look at Fiora at 10 and be like, Fiora at 10, that's crazy. That's that's dumb. But I basically, I, th I think that Fiora decks are built very wrong right now. And she's extremely flexible with some great options. There is some kind of good Fiora build around deck. It probably doesn't use barriers. Um, and even outside of that, a 333 challenger stat line is premium, right? And I don't think that champion tag is like super, super hard to give up for Demacia. So a lot of decks can fit in Fiora, which is why I rated her so high. But yeah, that's basically it. I hope that the fruits of my labor can be at least somewhat enjoyed because I've been... <laughs> I've been spending so much time on this project, but I enjoyed it uh, for the most part, you know, just doing this has helped. I, I, I've changed a lot of my opinions on cards just by going through every card two or three times. I went through every single card and rated them and re-rated them. And I've definitely, I, I, I feel like uh, I've changed my opinions on a lot of cards because of it. So it's still going to be uh, very valuable either way. All right, guys, that's going to be it for me. And I'll see you guys next time.